Bluetooth connected. Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be an in-depth overview and review sound test and discussion about the Rockville TM150 speaker set. I've already put up a video where I unboxed it and now let's just go over some of the cool feature specs and things that I don't like about it. So let's just first see what we're going to be doing in this video. I have a couple of my uh, instruments out here. We're going to check the amount of RMS watts that it has. We're going to check it with a decibel meter and we're gonna check it with an infrared thermometer. So there's an amplifier in the back and we'll basically just see how high the temperature is going to get eventually as it plays. Um, in terms of what it came bundled with, I still have some features here that I didn't put it on the speaker. As you could tell my right unit here has these feet on the bottom. Uh, that pretty much prevents a lot of the vibration and elevates it from the floor. I didn't put it on the left speaker unit yet. I will eventually. But this is what they look like, and they have a really soft bottom rubber uh, material that is adhesive. These simply just screw onto the bottom, you're good to go. We have an FM antenna and a 3.5mm auxiliary output, and this really nice full function remote where you can manually adjust the bass, the treble, and the EQ settings. One of my favorite features actually. For now, let's do a quick overview of the speaker itself. As you can tell, it has massive subwoofers on the bottom. These are 10 inch cones. Now, what I don't like about them is they are paper cones. Um, paper has a tendency to eventually disintegrate, but that's okay. Um, the front speakers are four inch polypropylene cones and one inch soak dome tweeters on top. Uh, these are both units that are sold together. I paid 200 for them. Right now on Amazon, they go for 250 if you are lucky enough to find the seller with these in stock. So before we get into all of my tests that I have planned for us today, let me just talk about something I noticed right out of the box. I have the grill cover off of the subwoofer, and as you can tell right here, I have these pieces of plastic on the floor. I didn't even move them, so when I removed the grill cover, you could see right here, the plastic just broke off. So it is very flimsy and the grill cover itself is pretty thin. You could easily see through it, which is not a big deal. That's normal to allow the sound to go through. But pretty much if you have a kid or anything and they just kind of press in against it, they can possibly damage the unit. The front speakers here don't have any kind of protection. Um, they are left exposed. And honestly, I don't mind, but if you have little kids around the house, that might be a situation. They can constantly feel like they should be pressing all of this but they are pretty stable. They are at least not paper cones. These are polypropylene uh, and seem to be fairly high excursion. From what I observed, the subwoofer is not a very high excursion unit. I'll press it in a little bit. It does move, but they are paper cones. The front of the unit has a really cool looking black reflective glass-like uh, material and it has full functionality here, which is uh, doubled on the remote control itself. The standby button is the power button. Now when the speaker is in standby position, that pretty much means it is off. As you could see, the LED is flashing. There is no way to turn this off when the speaker is plugged into the outlet. And I did notice that it does consume some power uh, even when it is just in standby mode, about six watts. The rear of the speakers is also very good looking in my opinion. Each unit has a large ducted port in the back. Let me put some light inside. You could pretty much just see the MFD wood cabinet in there. The fit and finish of the white speaker system is fantastic. I don't see anything uneven around the cabinet. It is not the thickest MFD wood, I'll give it that but it seems to sound pretty good. Uh, when we do the sound test later on, you guys can determine for yourself. These two separate units are connected with a proprietary cable. It simply just screws in and you're connected. The main amplifier is right here. It has this fairly large heat sink, but I'll tell you this, it gets a little bit on the warm side. That's why we're gonna do a temperature test for maybe a half an hour worth of listening, and we will see how hot this thing actually gets. In terms of connectability and functionality, it is expandable. So on the bottom here, you have an RCA expansion unit uh, connection here, so you can hook up a separate 
subwoofer if you wanted to or a separate speaker if you wanted to. On top, you have my favorite connection, which is the optical. Uh, you have the coaxial connection, the auxiliary connection, two microphone connections, and an FM antenna. At this point, let's power on the speaker and see what the welcome tone is when the Bluetooth connection is active. I have Bluetooth on. I am putting it on on my iPad right here. Let's see what it sounds like. It's fairly interesting. Listen to this, guys. It's trying to connect right now. Bluetooth connected. So it said Bluetooth connected, but the tone itself was just so off. It was a little bit kind of like, it felt like it was in a background. Now, that was my first impression of the speaker, but I'll tell you this, it doesn't sound that bad. So let's take a listen to some royalty-free music uh, right here on YouTube, and then we'll go through a couple of tests that we have. Before we do that, let me actually check the temperature of the rear amplifier so we can in fact know if it gets hot or not. Let's go to the back, guys. Okay, so here we go, the rear amplifier. Right now, it is 80 degrees. That's pretty much the temperature of the room. This is what it is. I could check in different locations. It doesn't matter. It's still 80 degrees. Sounds pretty good. On the speaker itself, I am at max volume right here. It says 30 on top. We have several EQ settings. Right now we are on zero for the subwoofer. This is what more bass sounds like. It's pretty thumping in here. I'm gonna lower it down a little bit. We also have some predetermined EQ settings here. They pretty much don't do much, but I don't know what AOC is. I don't know what OBB is. This is soft. Blue. This is, I guess, classical, pop, jazz, jazz is unique sounding, normal, and user. User is when you can adjust the treble and the bass yourself. So this is the treble. There we go. So right now we're on just basically normal standard EQ settings. Sounds pretty good. Let's listen to this song. Good sounding song, guys. Now let's do a frequency response test. I have a video here set up. Let's see how low it can go. It's claimed to go down to 50 hertz, but I have a feeling it could go down a little lower. Let's see.
Okay, so 50, it did go down to 50, but I gotta say, maybe 40, I still could hear a good amount of deep bass in the room here, even at 40. So 40 hertz is pretty low. Let me know if you guys can hear it. Try to listen through headphones. That is the best way to reproduce the sound that I'm recording. We will now do a max decibel test. This is also known as the loudness test to see how loud the speaker unit can get. The loudest portable Bluetooth speaker I was able to find on Amazon is $899 and it's rated at 122 decibels. Let's see if we could even get close to that or match it or even surpass it. I hope we can pass it. We're gonna basically just play a regular royalty free music here from YouTube and watch the decibel meter on the right here. I'm going to set it to the maximum decibel and as I talk or clap or whatever, it's gonna go up a little bit. So a clap is 100, it's 103, let's see. So you could see, based on just the clapping alone, it's gonna go up a little bit more. Right now we are at 108 decibels. So uh, let's leave it there actually, and see whether I could even surpass this, and it'll basically just track it as we keep going. Okay, we will start off at about 50% volume and now we'll just keep going up in volume until we get up to about 100%. Sixty-five percent volume. Seventy percent. Okay guys, we're at the end of the video. I hope I've done everything I set out to do to fully detail, overview, tell you my likes and dislikes about the speaker. In person, it sounds great. You saw the way that the subwoofer was moving and it had a good amount of excursion from the paper cone. Not then the world I was able to reach, I think at a point where I saw about 70 watts. Now I never went over about 75% uh, volume only because, you know, it's just too loud and the speaker does have a good amount of punch. So even though it's claimed to have a thousand watts, you know, if it hits a hundred true RMS, I'm happy with that. Good looking speaker, sounds great for 200 bucks right now. I think this is a great deal. If you guys have any questions about anything, want to see me do any more tests, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to look into it. Thanks.